Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'll be fixing up, and more importantly, cleaning up this filthy Apple Thunderbolt display. Seriously, someone sold it to me looking like this, covered in all sorts of grime, and even what looks like a bit of paint. It was purchased on a local buy and sell site for $100, which is about $300 to $350 less than what they fetch for on the used market. So it was a good bargain, despite the damaged cables that weren't mentioned. The pickup experience though, was really something else. Despite the seller knowing I was coming to collect it, they couldn't find the display. After 10 minutes of looking for the item, they eventually found it on their back porch. What it was doing outside, I'll never know. And it shouldn't be any surprise that they didn't clean it either. But this is what you get from a classic Bogan seller. Both the MagSafe and Thunderbolt cables are taped in their entirety, as of the typical cable degradation seen on Apple's rubberized cables. Around the device there are patches of brownish, sticky material, which I assume is the remnants of cigarette smoke. I wonder what the insides will look like. I'll need to open it anyway to be able to replace the damaged cable, because there isn't a way to detach it from the outside. While they didn't opt for an easy to remove plug connection here, I don't know. It reminds me of the old CRT monitors with a permanently attached VGA cable. Thankfully, it's really easy to open. Just like the iMacs from 2008 to 2011, the front glass is only attached with magnets, so it can just be pulled off with a pair of suction cups. This has to be one of Apple's best designs. Underneath is 12 torque screws that secure the LCD into the frame. They need to be removed next. The LCD itself is a 2K resolution LG panel. Having used three of the almost identical LED cinema displays with the same LCD, I can confidently say they look great, even if over 10 years old. You really just can't buy a monitor made from aluminium and glass from another brand. They all seem to be cheap flimsy plastic. Lifting up the LCD will find four cables, three of which need to be unplugged while the other is unscrewed. With that, the screen can be taken off. Inside we see more buildup of dust and cigarette smoke. We'll need to clean all this off as we go. Despite just being a monitor, it does have a fan for the power supply, meaning it draws in air at the bottom. The grime buildup in this area can be cleaned using a vacuum and later a brush for tougher areas. Another super useful tool is an air blower. I recently got one and it has to be one of the most basic things, but I use it all the time. Around the entire perimeter of the housing is more of the gross, brown, sticky cigarette grime. This wasn't easy to remove. After trying a few different things, I ended up using acetone and scrubbing it away with a cloth. For the remaining sections, I found a brush and air blower to be the most effective way to remove the dust. A vacuum wasn't much help and really shouldn't be used on circuit boards regardless. With everything looking much cleaner, it's time to remove the main data cable. But we need to get to it first. That involves removing the rear subwoofer and loosening the AC socket. Whether you're a fan of apples or not, you have to give credit where credit is due. They do tend to do a really good job with speakers and the devices, and this monitor is no exception. Monitor speakers are usually horrendous, but these ones are definitely not. With the original price tag of 1300 Australian dollars, you'd hope it was good. This monitor was only $99 less than a whole iMac, which came with an actual CPU, RAM, hard drive, and graphics card. With the cable unfastened, it's still connected with two cables, one attaching to the power supply, and the other terminating in a Thunderbolt connection that plugs into the logic board. After they're unplugged, we can feed the entire cable out through the display. The replacement cable was purchased for around $35 on eBay. It was advertised as brand new, but clearly isn't. Don't get me wrong, it's in fantastic condition, but it's not new. There's a few marks and the adhesive has been used. So I left them some neutral feedback as I didn't appreciate the lie. I would have still purchased it regardless if it was used. With the new cable in place, I can attach its connections as well as clean off the areas under the logic board. Proceeding, the board can be fastened back into position. On the other side of the monitor, the MagSafe cable can be attached onto the power supply. Keep in mind the power supply is completely exposed with no covers, meaning there's a risk of electric shock if you don't know what you're doing. 
Even if it's unplugged, high voltage capacitors can still shock you if they're not discharged. However, I can now install the AC socket as well as the retaining bracket for the cable we've just replaced. With that, we can install the subwoofer and connect its one cable. Before sealing everything up, I wanted to take a look at the only internal fan. Is it hiding any dust? Good thing I checked because it's clogged full of dust. Using a brush, I can agitate the particles before blowing them away. After a few goes, it looks like new again. Once it's attached, we'll be able to reinstall the LCD and test out our newly installed cable. We've made a huge difference on the inside, but the real noticeable difference will be on the outside. So let's get it back together so we can clean that next. Once we've installed all of the display screws, I can get the monitor stood up and connected to a Thunderbolt equipped Apple computer to test. Sure enough, it works perfectly. I'll clean off the LCD to remove any fingerprints before I get the front glass reattached. And just like that, it looks as dirty as it did at the beginning. Let's fix that. We'll start by cleaning off the front glass panel using some alcohol and a microfiber cloth. Interestingly, the dust has accumulated around the magnets that hold the glass in. Down at the base, it's even more filthy. Cleaning off the grime reveals several black marks. At first, I thought the blue stripe was paint, but after scraping it off, it seems to be pen ink, as when scraped away, it's liquid beneath. While messy, it did come off easily but I'm still not happy with the result as there's several marks and an obvious outline where the ink once was. That's where some Ajax comes in. I use this stuff to clean my bath, but it works just as well on this monitor. With a light scrub, it looks really good. I will repeat this cleaning method for the remainder of the aluminium. For the power cable, we'll need something less harsh, like some water and detergent. I don't want to use any harsh cleaners on them. While it means it won't be perfect, hopefully it'll be a lot cleaner than it is now. Once dry, we can attach the cable and plug the monitor into an Apple device. And we're done. So this is it. A once filthy and damaged Apple Thunderbolt display is now back in really great shape. Having only spent about $130 in two hours, I think this has been a pretty good deal. If you're looking for a similar Apple monitor yourself, make sure your computer supports the Thunderbolt connection, otherwise this monitor won't work. The previous LED cinema display looks identical, with the exception of only having three USB ports on the back, as well as an additional USB cable on the main cord. This older monitor uses the mini display port interface, meaning it'll work on anything that has or can be adapted to mini display port. As for this monitor, I think it's still got plenty of life left in it. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the cleaning playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.